Welcome back, Wargamers. We've got another edition of Budget Wargamer, and today we're going to talk about Death Watch Primaris Kill Team. So this is an additional video on top of what we talked about yesterday with the different stratagems and some other information about the new Codex Death Watch. This is going to be a little bit of a breakdown with an on-table demonstration of how you can put together some of the mixed Primaris teams when you're putting together your Primaris kill team for your Death Watch army using the new 8th edition codex that's going to be available for pre-order starting this coming Saturday. So it can be a little bit confusing for some of you people, but it's going to be an assembly where you're going to be putting together an ultra super uh basically like a super force that's going to join together and combine the special abilities kind of like voltron or the megazoid from power rangers whatever uh, generation you're a part of and let's go ahead and take a look at the special rules and then we'll do an on-table demonstration about what you have to do to build the primaris kill teams and what that looks like on the tabletop so the, the core of what you're going to have in your Primaris kill team is going to be your intercessor marines. So let's go ahead and bring up a little quick display. You, you've got to know what these guys are all about. These are your very basic um, Primaris marines. Oh, I forget the autofocus sucks real bad on this uh, camera. So what this essentially allows you to do is this allows you to be able to have the similar benefits that the tactical squads and those veteran teams had with the mixed um, terminators and the the power armor space marines the bikers and the guys in jetpacks things like that where they were forming a super force now your primaris marines are going to be able to take part in that same kind of super formation so that they're not completely useless and also encouraging you to purchase some of the other units that are available within and outside of the starter sets such as the hellblasters uh, the Reavers and the Inceptors and things like that and the Aggressors. So let's go ahead and take a look at what these special abilities are that are passed along. And we're taking a look right now on the Warhammer Community website. And the formation, the basic of these squads is going to be Intercessors. So you go ahead and you form up the core of your, of your kill team squad with your Intercessor Marines. And those are going to be beefed up by your uh, mission tactics and also by special munition bolt guns or bolt rifles that you're going to be able to fire the special munitions as well. So these guys aren't your, just your plain Primaris inter, uh, Intercessor Marines. These guys are beefed up a tiny bit. Then you have your Reavers. So these guys are going to be your kind of like your Primaris version of your Scouts. They've got usually the bolt pistol and the... Um, close combat weapon as well as the their terror squad so here's here's the first edition before we get onto the table to show how this is going to be built out so the way that these kill teams are going to work is that you, your primaris marines essentially just have their normal uh, death watch rules and then the special bolt munitions to go with their bolt rifles but then you can add one or more of these reaver models into the squad and that's going to add in the terror troops rule, which says that every unit must subtract one from their leadership characteristic if they are within three inches of any Reaver units or units that include any Reaver models. So simply the inclusion of one Reaver model within your mixed kill team squad is going to give you guys the ability to be able to uh, cause that entire unit to have terror, meaning that it subtracts one. Uh, from the leadership characteristics of all enemy squads within three inches, which is going to be strong, especially when you figure out how casualties are going to be determined and so on and so forth. Then you've got the fact that these guys also have shock grenades. So these shock grenades are only going to be able to be thrown by this reaver, uh, but that also means that it could just take one guy, throw that one grenade, cause that special effect. So that's going to cause them to suffer penalties to hit and prevent them from firing overwatch at your squad, which is a really a key ability, especially if you're going in for that charge. So Reavers are definitely going to be an auto-include in these kill team squads. Pretty much everything that we're going to talk about is going to be an auto-include in these mixed kill team squads, given that you have the points available to be able to field these guys tactically. So we'll set that guy aside because that's a real quick rule. It really makes the the easy to build reaver squad of three become ever valuable to the casual death guard or death watch player because they're going to be able to take those three and put those into three different kill team squads without having to buy the 60 dollars box of a 10-man squad so that's something to consider although if you want to be able to put on those nice shiny um <clears throat> shoulder pads from the 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 death watch to be able to make them actually look like it and i assume they're going to come out with primaris marine um death watch 
shoulder pads, but you would have to do either some modeling up if you're going to use the easy to build, or you are going to have to get suckered into buying those $60 boxes. I don't think that there's going to be a lot of reason with these new kill team squads, since these are going to be a troop choice. You're going to have the ability to hold down objectives. You're going to have the ability to have mixed special rules and mixed special weapons that really makes these Primaris Marines on the Death Watch become the super Marines of the Astra Mil um, Adeptus Astartes. So there's not going to be a reason not to take Primaris Marines as your core troop choice because you're going to be able to hold objectives. You're going to have special weapons. You're going to have massive special rules that make these uh, mixed squads so much better than just playing them independently as the normal squads that they are. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next type of choice that you can put into your mixed uh, squad, which is going to be the aggressors. Now the aggressors are going to be one of those that you don't get within the, the Dark Imperium starter box. So you're going to have to run out and at least buy the easy to build set, or you're going to have to shell out a little bit more money for the normal squad. And you're definitely going to have to shell out more money for the normal squad if you want to use anything other than the, the flamers that are on these guys. But the special rule that the aggressors bring on to the tabletop to help out this mixed kill team is that they have the relentless advanced special rule and it says that a unit of intercessors that include any aggressors does not suffer any penalty to their to hit rolls for advancing with assault weapons so that's key if you have uh, any assault weapons but more importantly they don't take any penalties for moving and firing heavy weapons so that's a nice ability, and especially depending on how you end up fit, fitting in your squad. Aggressors may or may not be uh, an auto-include in your in every single one of your kill team squads, depending on whether or not you actually have assault weapons, because if you don't, you're not going to benefit from that special rule. Same thing if you don't have any heavy weapons. So if you have no heavy weapons or assault weapons, then you're not going to be able to benefit specifically from their special rule, but it does help on the save side of things to be able to have some of these guys in the squad. Plus, they also bring in some pretty nasty firepower, which helps beef up the average firepower so you're not just running around the tabletop with average bolt rifles. So then we have the Inceptors. And these guys, these guys are going to lose. Putting one of these guys or more than one of these guys in that squad is going to help, is going to make them essentially lose their maneuverability around the battlefield as, an, as a standalone three-man or, or more squad. But these Inceptors are going to add a valuable bonus onto your kill team that's going to make it worth including these guys in the force. So the Inceptor Strike means that this model itself can move across other models and terrain as if they weren't there because, yes, this guy can fly. He will not add the fly ability to the entire squad. That would be auto-broke. But he is going to give the Intercessors that include any Inceptors the ability to fall back when it falls back it can shoot later that turn as if it could fly so that's key you're going to be able to get in throw a grenade a shot grenade hit without overwatch and then fall back and then be able to and fall back the next turn be able to shoot all over again and then here's where the intercessors in my opinion get very interesting so you've got those hell blasters these are guys that are a squad of all plasma guns essentially plasma rifles and normally taking a casualty on that squad is going to be uh, a big a big loss because there was a lot of points tied up into each individual hell blaster and a squad made up of five or ten of these guys means that every single lost model loses a special weapon on like a devastator squad so this gives you that ability to be able to um stick some hell blasters into your intercessor squads when you make a kill team in order to be able to beef up the firepower because that's one of the things that the intercessor squads are essentially lacking in their natural design on the other chapters is that they don't have those special abilities such as being able to bring heavy weapons and things like that so once we throw in the hell blasters into these squads and we're bringing in those uh, types of rifles you're going to be able to uh, not get a special rule but you're going to be able to have your regular intercessor marines take the wounds on behalf of these hell blasters, keeping these guys alive for quite a bit of time. So if you want to be able to field a squ uh, squad that has like five intercessors and five hell blasters, now you've got some bullet sponges to be able to take wounds for your hell blasters. But also those intercessors being death watch aren't going to be completely useless. They're still going to have their special munitions. And now that they're now that those hell blasters are in a troop choice unit. Those are also going to be able to help hold objectives more securely because they're going to have some of that stronger firepower to hold off some of those lighter vehicles and also those heavier squads that would normally try to come in and wipe your troops off of some of the objectives. So let's get into how we're going to actually build the squads. And that's how we're going to, or that's why we're going to switch over here to the video capture. And let's get this set up somewhat. 
we're still using this uh, fa fancy rigged desk lamp with the um, horrible. <laughs> um, there we go. With this horrible webcam. All right. So forgive me if it gets a little hairy up in here. So well, here's what we're going to do. Move this out of the way. And then we're going to go through organizing up your squad. So the core of your squad is going to be made up of your intercessor marines. So we're going to set aside all the norm, all the other models for the time being. And then we're going to act as if we're building out one of these kill team with mixed squads. So we're going to throw in our sergeant model. We're going to throw in some of those intercessor marines. And there we have it. So we're film, forming up the core of our squad there. And then from that point forward, what we're going to say is, okay, I want to add here, uh, I want to add some firepower. So I'm going to throw a few hell blasters in there because I want to be able to add those uh, plasma rifles into the squad. So now I've, I don't have, I haven't picked up any special rules, but I picked up some special firepower. And of course I've still got my intercessor Marines at a lower point cost and also with their special bolt gun munitions. So no special rules are picked up yet, but then I take one of the Reavers. Let's say I just want to put one in the squad. So now I've picked up a special ability. This entire squad now has a terror special rule. So all the enemy units within three inches of any model in this squad are going to subtract one from their leadership. And that's valuable. Plus this Reaver also has the ability to throw his shot grenade if it when and if he wants to. Nobody else in the squad has a shot grenade. So it gives him that special one-off grenade ability. So we've picked up that special ability. Now we want to throw in one of the aggressors. For a proxy here, I'm going to throw in the uh, Space Marine Captain, or Primaris Captain in, in aggressor armor. And now we've picked up another special rule. So in addition to having a guy here that's got a little bit better save that can be in the unit and bring about the um, the fists with the, the bolt guns in them, now the entire squad has the ability to move and shoot without penalty with assault weapons if they've just advanced, or they're able to move and fire without penalty if they have any heavy weapons. So that's a nice ability to be able to add to it. I, I say this isn't an auto-include, but it certainly is something that would be nice to add to certain squads depending on what you've imagined their battlefield role being on the tabletop. And then last but not least, I think this is probably one of the other, so the Reaver to me is an auto-include. Hell Blasters, heck yes, are an auto-include. And then I think that the Inceptors are also going to be an auto-include into one of these kill teams because the Inceptor is going to give you that ability to fall back and fire as if you had the ability to fly. And that's going to give you the ability to come in. You're going to hit in hand-to-hand -hand combat or if you've been assaulted, you're going to fall back and then you're going to shoot again. And then you're going to be shooting at super close range with all these uh, special munition bolt guns, hell blasters, and with the close combat uh, cl uh, pistol of the Reaver. And that also means that if you did include one of these guys in the in one of these aggressors in the squad with the, the twin bolt guns and things like that, or with the twin flamers, you're now going to have a lot of firepower to lay down. So this is something that I think makes up a key unit that is probably going to be seen on the tabletop way more than the normal tactical squads that I was expecting from the Death Watch. And maybe, maybe not, but maybe this renders that get starting, um, get started Death Watch box that's out there for $85 a little less useless. I don't want to say that it is rendering it completely useless, but it's giving it a little less utility on the tabletop by providing so much power to these aggressors. Now, or these intercessors and kill teams. But yes, of course, you're gonna spend a lot more points for the for the luxury of being able to have these squads on the tabletop, which means you're gonna have less uh, lower model count, especially by the time you do put an Inceptor or an Aggressor into the squad. Um, so you gotta mix it as it is because you can't mix up the Tactical Marines with the Primaris, that would be too broken. And you do have to keep in mind that if you put things like the Aggressors and the Inceptors in the squad, you're not gonna be able to potentially take transports so that means, or at least not get into the transport. So if you need to get these guys quickly to some part of the battlefield, per se, even though they have a, a nice long range aside from the Reaver and the Aggressor, and that, that means you're going to lose the ability to put them inside that transport if they're a mixed squad. Um, so, Or at least if they include certain models in that squad. So just keep that in mind. If these guys are going to be um, fielding certain roles, maybe perhaps you want to trim off these heavier models and you want to just go for... 
a little bit more of a mix of Reavers, Hellblasters, and Intercessors. That's totally your call, and I highly recommend that you you play test a couple uh, games with these types of squads and pick up some of the boxes, assuming that you haven't already got some of these models to flesh out that for you. So let's go ahead and let's go back and take a look at anything we may have missed. So jumping back in, here we are back in there, and let's go ahead and set this off to the side. Now go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys like this type of content, want to get some more walkthroughs, talk some more hobby, um, definitely appreciate that. That helps YouTube know that you enjoyed the content. Also helps make sure that I get more exposure to other people who like videos like this so we can get some more like-minded fans here on the channel. And comment below what your thoughts are on the Death Watch. So as of yesterday's news, I wasn't totally sure that the different stratagems that were available and most of them that they were teasing were based around mission tactics, which had their utility to be able to reroll um, failed wounds against certain types of models, but it didn't provide enough diversity in the Death Watch force at that point to be able to make much determination on whether they were just a gimmicky army or whether there's actually something worth playing them on the tabletop aside from having a deep-seated love for the Inquis Inquisition. So I seem to think that after this ex uh, expose here, that they've got a lot of viability on the tabletop and certainly the ability to sell a lot more of those Primaris Marines that Games Workshops brought out in 8th edition. So here's some key of what, or, or some examples of what they're saying you could use. These aren't locked in examples, but these are just some of the Warhammer um, Games Workshop Warhammer community suggestions of building a unit of close assault specialists. They're saying pick up six intercessors with bolt rifles, one inceptor, two aggressors with flamestorm gauntlets specifically, and one reaver with bolt carbine. So they're saying to take the bolt carbine, not to take the close combat uh, unit. So if you do that, you're certainly going to have to pick up one of the reaver boxes to be able to build it out that way. It says that this unit is designed to fight up close and personal, closing in right on enemy lines and unleashing punishing punishing short range firepower. So they're saying that the aggressors with those flamestorm gauntlets are going to act as a deterrent to any unit that wants to charge you because you're going to get auto um, overwatch with those four flamestorm gauntlets on those two of the aggressors. So yeah, that's going to that's gonna, uh, make some people not want to charge into you, but it's also going to give you a lot of punch. And then having that Inceptor in there is going to allow you to fall back and still shoot again um, in the following turn. So that's an awesome one. If you think staying stationary is more key, we've got putting in five Hellblasters, four with Stalker bolt rifles, so that's not your normal bolt rifle, one with a grenade launcher, and then four Hellblasters with plasma incinerators, so that's your typical uh, weapon, and then one aggressor with auto bolt storm gauntlets and frag storm grenade launcher, so that's a different build out than the two you would have put in the other mix. And that means here that the Incestors will be able to reliably stack up wounds with Hellfire rounds, since they have those special bolters, as well as providing a handy ablative screen for Hellblasters, ablative meaning that they're going to take wounds for those guys, and the Aggressor will allow you to move and shoot, meaning you won't have to sacrifice mobility when you've got these Hellblasters in your squad with those heavy weapons. So that's a good one. And then you've got... So they, they're not putting an Inceptor in that one because it's more of a, uh, of a uh, slightly maneuverable version that's not meant to get up close and personal, but just take its key positions around the battlefield. Then you've got an Assault Fire Base. So they're saying in this case, you would put five Intercessors and three Hellblasters. Are you catching the drift that the Hellblasters seem to be a pretty key um, component to these mixed forces? One Aggressor and one Inceptor. So no Reavers in this squad, which is interesting. And it makes you wonder... If you just do an auto-include of at least one of everything, then why wouldn't that make it more multi-purpose? That's like forming up the green lion, the red lion, the black lion, the blue lion, and the yellow lion every single time and making up Voltron rather than just forming four of them up and be missing an arm. So explain to me why you wouldn't want to put all four of the unit types together into one type of mixed squad. Although not having the codex in hand, we don't know any drawbacks that would be there other than additional point sync. But just comment below what your thoughts are there on the Death Watch. We'll make some more videos like this coming up. We totally expect that this Saturday we'll have some more information on the following week's upcoming new releases from Games Workshop. So stay tuned to Budget Wargamer.